Okay, since the release of the iPhone 5, there have been a few stories emerging uh, talking about that the iPhone 5 may have choppy Wi-Fi throughput. Uh, as someone that actually owns the iPhone 5 as well as an iPhone 4S, I thought I'd go ahead and do a quick comparison video for you guys just to check out whether or not this iPhone 5 really does have a Wi-Fi issue. So what I have here is the new iPhone 5, 64 gigabyte model in black, and what we have here is an iPhone 4S, 32, uh, no, 64 gigabytes in white, and just to prove this is a 4S, there we see Siri. Okay, um, so first of all, just to demonstrate that these phones are both actually on the same Wi-Fi network, um, I, my router is a dual band uh, wireless router, so broadcast on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz uh, frequencies. At the moment, both phones are connected to the same 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and we'll begin our tests with that. So launching the speed test app. First of all, I'll just demonstrate that both apps are going to, going to connect to the same server, and that server is going to be the Telstra server in Sydney. Okay, so first of all, let's start off with the iPhone 4S. Now, I'm not going to do one of those tests where you run both devices simultaneously, because obviously that just means the devices are sharing bandwidth, and whichever one's going to hog the most bandwidth is going to win, so we're going to test them individually. So my DSL syncs at around about 16.5 megabit, and my upstream connection is around about um, well, 235 KB per second, or kilobits per second. Okay, so there's our first run from the iPhone 4S. Let's try the iPhone 5. Okay, not much difference in the downstream. And slightly better result in the upstream, although not enough to be a difference. So let's try again. Again, similar sort of downstream speed. I, when I run these tests, I prefer to have my settings set to show KB uh, kilobytes per second, as that's usually what you see as you uh, with your browser when you're downloading. I just think that means a bit more to me than uh, megabit per second. Again, very similar speeds being produced by the iPhone 5, running on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. And as you see, it's almost the exact same speed upstream. Okay, so as I mentioned, the iPhone 5 handles both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So we'll go ahead and switch over to the 5 gigahertz uh, band. We'll see how things go from there. Okay, just double check the same, the same server. And begin. Okay, so now we're now running on the 5 gigahertz frequency instead of the 2.4. Okay, so that is a substantially lower value there recorded for the 5 gigahertz value, uh, the 5 gigahertz frequency. iPhone 4S Wi-Fi performance is being very consistent thus far. Again, the downstream speed for the 5 gigahertz frequency is coming lower than what we've seen for the iPhone um, 4 and 5 running on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. And we'll just do another run on that. So that will be three runs on the 5 gigahertz frequency. OK, 
Okay, it actually locked up for a while there. Doesn't seem to be any issue in the upstream direction. One more test on that one, I think. Okay, now we're back running at the same sort of speeds that we're seeing for the iPhone 4S on the 2.4 gigahertz. And just another one just to try to get those replicates up. Okay, again we've had a situation where it seems to have uh, locked up, resulting in this um, inconsistent graph that you can see along the bottom here. But again, very consistent um, upload. Just to check this, I'll now switch back to the 2.4 gigahertz frequency and we'll see if we go back to having consistent results with the iPhone 5. Okay, so we're now running back on 2.4 gigahertz. Again, just double check this server. Still with Totra. Okay, so we're back up at um, 1,700 kilobytes per second again with a very consistent profile. Okay, so those were some tests on the iPhones, um, just out of interest. I currently have my new iPad here. Um, Alright, so we'll just quickly double check this. So it's currently running on the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi frequency. So if we perform these tests with the iPad, it'd be interesting to see what we get. Again, choosing the same server. Okay, again, same sort of downstream speed produced by the um, iPad 3. And again, consistent result for the upstream speed. So we'll now switch over to the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Don't tell anyone my password. Okay, so we're now running on 5 gigahertz. Double check this server, still the same server. Okay, so the new iPad is pulled down again, 17, uh, 1700 plus kilobytes per second with the same upstream speed. Okay, so that tells us that um, so this test with the iPad tells us that my 5 gigahertz frequency uh, being broadcast by my router is actually working perfectly fine. Uh, just out of interest, it's an Asus RT-N56U. So going back to the phones, um, the choppy throughput that we're seeing with the iPhone 5 on the 5 gigahertz frequency would suggest that it is actually... Uh, something that's specific to the iPhone.
So again, here we've had a little inconsistency in the throughput. So the ability to um, connect to 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi was only just introduced in the iPhone 5. Um, so, I mean, it may be a matter of um, the hardware not quite being ready. Um, it's hard to say at this point. It's hard to say whether or not it is even a real, um, a real fault there. However, I've, as you can see, I've just switched back to the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. And again, consistency seems to be much better operating at 2.4 gigahertz than what it does operating at the 5 gigahertz. Alright, well there you have it. That's just a brief video demonstrating Wi-Fi capabilities of both the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 4S as well as um, a comparison there against the 5 gigahertz frequency that uh, is available to use on the new iPad. Um, as I said, difficult for me to say at this point whether there really is a fault with the iPhone 5. However, in my situation, I certainly get better throughput with the 2.4 gigahertz frequency than I do with the 5 gigahertz frequency. So at this point, I think I will be sticking to using 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi.